Ralph Puckett Jr. was born in 1926 in Tifton, Georgia, at the time a southern agricultural town with a population around 3,000. At 17, he joined the Army Enlisted Reserve Corps, but was discharged a few years later to attend the United States Military Academy at West Point. He wasn't in the service, but I really wanted to have the same characteristics as my dad. I really thought he was great. At age 14, I'd done a lot of hard physical work as a truck driver and a warehouseman. Not because my folks were poor or something, I just got a good job, wanted it. I learned that I could withstand some tough work. I learned that there are a lot of men out there who never had the advantages that I had that was good or better than I am. I learned that and I knew there was a lot of good in a lot of people if you get it out of them. After graduating from West Point in 1949, Puckett was sent to Japan in preparation for the Korean War. Before arriving in Korea, he was offered a unique opportunity. The Army was looking to reactivate the Rangers, an elite fighting force that had been deactivated after World War II. I was on my way to Korea right after, shortly after the war had started, and as I was about to load up on a ship to go across the channel into Korea from Japan, I was told over the PA system to report to such and such a room at headquarters. I went there and reported to a very senior looking colonel and uh, he said, I'm ser searching for volunteers for a ranger company I'm going to form. I said, sir, I'd like to be in that ranger company. I'll take any position. And it was, it was a big surprise when he told me to come back the next day and I reported to him and he said, I decided to take you into the ranger company and you're going to be the company commander. And I said, dear God, don't let me get a bunch of good guys killed. I knew I was way over my head and I knew it was a great risk for the army to put that faith in me. I knew it was a great risk for my soldiers who were going to be rangers. There were many things about them that were unusual. For one thing, they were non-infantry. They were service troops. They were way below the experience level of the positions that they were going to fill in the Ranger Company. It went over overnight into South Korea, landed there to a training site in the middle of a rice paddy and began our training. I tried to never let an error go unpointed out to them or corrected but I tried to give them a lot of praise for the good work that they're doing. Remember, <laughs> these guys, are, they weren't infantry. They had six weeks of infantry training in my ranger company. Despite predictions from leadership that the American forces would be home by Christmas of 1950, Puckett had his doubts. Christmas, that was about six weeks away. There had been some tough fighting, some tough casualties, and it just didn't sound like it was going to be easy or that we were going to be home in six weeks or that we'd even be in Japan in six weeks. I knew there was a lot going on throughout Korea during the war, but I had just a small part and that's where my focus was. On November 25th, 1950, Puckett was given orders to capture and hold Hill 205 in support of an offensive along the Shangchung River. Leadership hoped that by overcoming the Korean People's Army in a decisive attack, they would end the war within six weeks' time. It's a rugged mountain face, 205 meters high, not very high, but it was nothing special. It was just a, a hill in the defensive position for the Chinese that we had taken that, that morning, to captured, we'd been an assault force, we lost four rangers along the way. We had about uh, 20, 25 rangers reach the top of the hill at, that night. I knew that it was defended by a force, Chinese force, but that's, that's all I knew. But I also learned that it was over a mile away from the closest U.S. Army ground force. So I knew Ranger Company is pretty much on its own tonight. After early success capturing the hill, 
Puckett's men endured six waves of attacks over the next 24 hours as the Chinese army tried to retake the lost territory. The ranger company was outnumbered 10 to 1. I had a handful. We were in the 20s total number during the last hours of that battle. The Chinese were overcoming the 8th Army along the entire front, so it was a tough situation. I had no idea what was going on anyplace else. All I could think about is this little spot right here. I'm, I'm this company commander of these 28 soldiers, rangers. We got to hold on. Pocket repeatedly exposed himself to enemy fire to help guide artillery support, often dangerously close to his own position. His courage and leadership was a source of inspiration to his men. Over the course of the battle, he was injured multiple times until he was finally left unable to move. During the final attack, Puckett ordered a withdrawal and instructed his men to leave him behind so they could safely flee the Chinese army. Billy G. Walls and David L. Pollock, two PFCs, who I'd chewed out a few days before for doing something they weren't supposed to. But those two guys risked their necks, come back on the hill. I told them to leave me behind because it was very dangerous for them. The Chinese were already coming across our hill. But uh, they decided to drag me off under the cover of a couple of rangers who followed them down the hill. I had started out that morning with uh, about 50 we had 11 who got off the hill ready to fight the next morning. Before being medically evacuated, Puckett was able to direct a final concentration of artillery fire onto Hill 205 before the withdrawal of the 8th Army. For his actions during the battle, he received the Distinguished Service Cross. Puckett's wounds left him hospitalized for a year, during which time he met his future wife, Jean. Puckett continued his service for 22 years, first at the U.S. Army Ranger School and West Point, then later in Vietnam. Among his many honors, Puckett received a second Distinguished Service Cross, two Silver Stars, and several Purple Hearts. Puckett retired as a colonel in 1971, but continued his service as an honorary colonel for the 75th Ranger Company from 1996 until 2006. In 2021, after 71 years, Puckett's Distinguished Service Cross for the Battle on Hill 205 was upgraded to the Medal of Honor. He repeatedly abandoned positions of relative safety to make his way from foxhole to foxhole to check the company's perimeter and to distribute ammunition amongst the Rangers. First Lieutenant Puckett's extraordinary heroism and selflessness above and beyond the call of duty were in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. I was surprised. I felt that that sort of excitement that should come early in a person's career, and here I am 94 years old, so I was surprised at that. But I mainly thought there's about 50 Rangers in the past that have really done an outstanding job and taken themselves from non-combat basic armed soldiers into being some of the best that our country has ever produced but I certainly felt that my Rangers deserved recognition and that kind of a award for what they had done. They did the work, they did the fighting. Two of them carried me off the battlefield. They're the ones who should get the credit. There was nothing Ranger special in what we did in the defense of, that, of, of attacking and defending Hill 205. It was just pure infantry warfare, close hand, we knew our jobs. That rifleman knows how to fire his weapon, keep it operating, how to look after himself, and how to look after that buddy in the foxhole with him. The fundamental principle that I've come up with is be there. When the going gets tough, whether it's cold weather, rainy weather, somebody's shooting at you, hot, going without food, whatever it is, be there. We had to depend on ourselves. Each soldier had to know, I know my job. I know how to look after the man next to me, and he's going to take care of me. Then we uh, did what we've been trained to do, nothing spectacular, nothing brilliant. Most soldiers will know anyway. 
He didn't do that by himself. And I say that I hardly did it at all.